I started working uh, in Australian uh, medicine as a psychiatrist and submitted my credentials from Russia and uh, the College of Psychiatrists uh, requested uh, Russian verification of my credentials. Uh, I warned the College of Psychiatrists uh, that I was a refugee, political refugee under Australian protection, and it was possible that Russians could try uh, to give them some disinformation. It is exactly what happened. Uh, a Russian official uh, informed uh, the college uh, that uh, my uh, credentials in medicine so with specialty in psychiatry uh, were forgeries. And so I was suspended with my registration. And that was uh, it for, uh, for some time. Uh, but uh, we had one uh, Indian uh, surgeon in the uh, state of Queensland uh, whose several patients died. Uh, that uh, Indian surgeon was trained in the uh, United States. And so as a result of that, it was public scandal, and Queensland Parliament established a commission to investigate all uh, medical facilities, and in particular, uh, overseas trained uh, doctors. It when my uh, uh, that information from Russia, disinformation from Russia, came to view. So, well, it was widely uh, um, publicized, it was scandal, and I was charged by police uh, with fraud. And finally, after many years of uh, investigation, uh, I was found guilty by the court, uh, just ignoring my refugee status, and uh, I served uh, my jail term as a result. This is what happened to me. As an Orthodox bishop in 1990, I played one of uh, major roles in uh, the resurrection of Ukrainian autocephalous church. I participated in consecration of first independent Ukrainian bishops. Uh, it was um, a shock for the Russian Orthodox Church uh, because uh, it lost uh, many believers, many parishes, and millions of money as well. And, uh, uh, and uh, after that, uh, I met uh, a Metropolitan uh, Vladimir Sternyuk, Archbishop of uh, Lviv, uh, who was a um, patriarchal uh, locum tenens uh, of uh, Ukraine Greek Catholic Church. And uh, he suggested that I could join uh, Roman Catholic Church and establish, uh, not establish a resurrect, it was some normal destroyed in 1920s uh, Russian uh, or Catholic Church in the North right? So um, I was accepted into the Catholic Church, uh, became Catholic bishop, and uh, so and I resurrected uh, some parishes on the theory of Russia. Um, uh, it resulted in uh, protest of Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, the Patriarch of Moscow written to uh, the Pope of Rome, the Holy Father, lying about me. And um, 
Ми були діянами номер один в церкві. Not less than that. So, and uh, because uh, nationalism was strengthening and uh, uh, on the background of collapsing communist ideology, uh, that nationalistic orthodox ideology was becoming, was becoming more and more uh, important for uh, Russian authorities. So my life uh, became difficult. And uh, in 92, after um, uh, I would say intense campaign in the media, against me uh, with lies and falsification and so on. And um, even an uh, attempt to kill, or maybe it was a threat, just attempt to scare me. But uh, later I learned about indeed a plot to kill me. And I had no choice but to leave Russia because I just couldn't continue um, acting in my capacity as a head of uh, Russian uh, uh, Catholic Orthodox Church. Well, uh, that was uh, uh, Bishop uh, Ioan, or John in English, uh, Bodnarchuk. He was a former Bishop of Zhytomyr, and he actually became a head of Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Actually, he asked me personally to help uh, him in the resurrection of Ukraine Autocephalus Church, and I agreed. It happened uh, yeah, soon after my return from the United States in uh, 1990. Yeah. So uh, he phoned me and uh, asked for help, and I came. Uh, to West Ukraine and so and uh, they consecrated two first uh, Ukrainian independent bishops. In Orthodox canons, uh, you need uh, uh, two or three bishops that consecrate new bishops. So uh, Ukrainian church uh, got its bishops. And, and, uh, and possibility for future development. Uh, that's why it was so important. Yeah. I believe that now they don't have, they don't need uh, that uh, feature, I would say, uh, before. Or a uh, communist country, the Soviet Union, uh, were controlling uh, Russian Orthodox Church. Every bishop was a KGB agent. It was just um, essential. Otherwise, a person couldn't become a bishop. And many leading priests uh, were KGB agents as well. Moreover, some KGB officers were specifically trained in seminary and were working, but uh, there were a few of them on. It wasn't. Mostly they, uh, they just uh, were using agents. Uh, but now, uh, when a Russian Orthodox Church claims its um, bigger and bigger role in political life, I wouldn't say in spiritual life of the country. And actually, uh, uh, Russian Orthodox na nationalistic ideology replaced communist ideology. It became a very mm, powerful mean for uh, manipulation of people by Russian authorities. So now uh, Russian authorities uh, 
do not need to have their agents within church because church is openly serving Russian nationalistic authorities. And, and you know, like uh, Patriarch Kirill openly supported uh, that aggression in Ukraine. Mm. Yes, I, I believe the position of Holy Father, the Pope of Rome, uh, was um, very spiritual uh, because uh, he said that any war is against spirit. Any war is lost for any side participating in the war. And actually, there are no winners in any wars. Winners uh, is material category, but from spiritual category, they're all uh, losing in the wars, of course. It's terrible tragedy, deaths, loss of people who wanted happiness, who wanted love, yes, and they died. What for? This is a big question. What for? Well, it's a big question. Uh, I would like to stress two things. Uh, first one, uh, uh, the many countries signed uh, international agreements about refugees and human rights of refugees, about protection of refugees. Uh, accordingly, uh, the person has the right for protection if being persecuted. So under those international agreements, uh, countries undersigned those agreements are obliged to provide protection. So, and if a refugee has a right for protection and country which accepted the particular refugee. It is an obligation to protect a refugee. Uh, I believe it's a good idea for a refugee um, to bring all his or her, um, you know, concerns to authorities of country which accepted a refugee. And I believe uh, that it should be better um, better determined what exactly protection means, what obligations country undertakes that to protect a refugee. Unfortunately, I can't see this in Australia. In my case, it didn't work. Not, and I don't want anyone to follow my steps, I would say, and to find himself or herself in such a position. When you were promised to be protected from a particular country, and then disinformation from that country uh, was accepted, uh, you know, as a legitimate evidence, uh, sub that's acceptable in, in the court. But of course, it's nonsense, and I think it should be corrected. And uh, it's uh, there is what to learn from this situation. So my advice to refugees: uh, first, if they can, they have to bring all their credentials and uh, as many documents with them as they able. But sometimes situation is such that they can't bring documents. Sometimes situation is such that it's not possible to verify documents. It is very important for countries who are taking refugees to develop a system of verifying credentials of refugees of independently verifying independently from the country of origin 
Sometimes very strange things happen. Uh, several years ago in Australia, the third secretary of Chinese embassy asked for asylum. And Australian authorities ask uh, the embassy of China to provide information of that person. It was very stupid. Of course, um, it's, it's hard to believe, but yes, it happened. So um, I believe that uh, it's important for refugees to be prepared for everything and to bring their concerns to authorities of country and to fight actually for their uh, right to be protected. That's what I think is important. Well, sometimes it could go smoothly, I guess, and sometimes it could be quite complicated, unfortunately. It's not easy to be a refugee. Yeah.